I'm revisiting Mazurka in F major, and I have some ideas about choreographies and how you can remain um, loose enough, relaxed enough to get some of these repeated notes. Sometimes your thumbs have to repeat dotted A sixteenth, a quarter, quarter, and you have to have a very loose thumb. This is one of these pieces where if you tighten your thumb like this, you're in big trouble. It has to just, your thumbs have to be so independent and relaxed, you know? And um, they have to pass over. Inside the chord, they can't get locked in. And that's what's tricky about this, I think. The other thing is these dotted A sixteenths, which have um, repeated notes, and how, again, you don't want to get jammed in and tight. So I just throw my wrists at them. Literally, that energy comes down my arms. I'm thinking of this a little bit of a rebound effect, so I do a little energized beginning, which rebounds into the next two notes, so you get this. Right away, I need that energy. But then I need more on that third beat, that third beat, which is part of the mazurka rhythm here. And then this 16th that's coming next is going to a half note. You really have to get to that half note. It's easy for that to fade away and get yum papa. You really have to have that. If you're a singer, you need the oxygen to the long note. You've got to get to that long note at the end. And that will define the dominant because you end up with a C major chord, which is a dominant of F major. So it's a very important point in the piece and early on to get to that dominant. So that's what you have to decide. Where am I going with this? So first you're springboarding to the third beat. Yum, ba, ba, da. Yum, ba, ba. You do the same thing now. This is going to D minor chord, which is the sixth chord. You're doing a sequence on the level of the sixth chord, which is D minor. And it's still big. Yum, ba, Doing a little delay to show you what I'm doing. Yum, Going to the B flat chord, which is the four chord, the subdominant, we still have the motif of jump, ta ta da, that third beat. It's all quite big. It's all quite big. Now, this comes a little echo phrase, the next two lines does the same thing you just did, only you're doing it as a P. Now, it could, you see P and you go, oh, I'm going to become delicate, but that's not what happens. Because even though it's much softer from the F that you started with, you want the vitality and the springiness that you did in the first part. But it's softer, but it still has the same definition of rhythm, definition of where the accent is in the mazurka beat, and where you're going to the half note. So I'm playing it softer, but I don't want to disappear. Remember, I started with... On this piano, soft would be... That's very important. You can't overlook that mazurka rhythm. Now this next part, you can call it a B section, but it really is the same basic idea of vitality with the dotted A sixteenths of the quarter quarter, except you don't you don't have a half note till the fourth measure. So instead of these fragments of two measures plus two, you have a longer phrase going across to get to the half note. Now, this is double F. You could say that this is the peak of the piece. It's the biggest dynamic. Again, you're throwing your hands on that dotted A 16th. You're throwing the wrists. Let's put it this way. You're throwing the wrists at that. Now, what's tricky is if the, t the thumbs get tight, you won't get this. But I have to think my thumbs are so light, I might just do the outer, outer voice like this. Just that. Yum, ba-bum. Yum, ba-bum. That means I'm thinking, don't tighten your thumbs. And here... The bass. Or yum, 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 yum. I know that's where the thumb is going ultimately, even though it's repeated. Now, when I have the repeated thumbs inside the octave and then down here, they have to be very light. Yum, 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 yum. My thumb is like this, comes right out of my wrist. Yum, da dum, yum, da dum. Yum, da dum. Here again, it's that rebound effect where you throw energy, that energy takes you to the next two notes. Yum, ba bum. Now, 
I think the problem is if those thumbs get tight, we're in trouble. So think of the outer voice and just let the thumbs lightly come out of the wrist. Don't tighten the thumbs. but less arm weight. It's really hard. The hard thing is this hand's going one, two, I use one, two, one, two, one, five. So it's easy to miss that. I broaden it a little. I broaden it a little. going to very soft dominant of F major. Throw your hands at it, throw your wrist at it. Again, light thumbs, light thumbs. When I say light, don't get tight on your thumbs. Just let them come right out of your wrists. That's why I think of thumbs coming out of my wrists, just like that. Now this part is the real different section of the whole piece, and it says a little bit more moving, moving up, alive, um, animated. helpful because you've got to be so loose here and you have to like like you're throwing a ball you know and you have to keep bouncing out of that energy it's like this is a, a little bit of a trampoline effect I would say through this piece and then when you do the echoes you don't want to be so tiny that the piece sort of disappears you still want the vitality of the mazurka rhythm which is sometimes emphasizing the third beat in this piece sometimes emphasizing the second beat but always making sure your half notes you go into those half notes don't let them disappear on you Really, because that by the end of the measure, you have, to, you have a full gathering of harmony. You have big, bigger voices that have come together in a, in a choir-like effect of a, a bigness that you need. So it's easy to just let half notes fall away.